This is the brand new Citroen Berlingo, a small van that looks a little bit more like a small medium van, but we're not going to let that cloud our judgment. It scooped awards year after year. In fact, on its launch in 2019, it was named International Van of the Year, and since then it just seems to be scooping even more accolades. So what do you say we crack open this award-winning small van and give it its very own Vanarama road test? Now, before we get started, I'd just like to say that I sincerely hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van, car or pickup truck, head to vanorama.com and check out the leasing deals. Now, with all that said and done, let's start at the front where we always do. I'm not sure what it is about the Citroen Berlingo's front end that I really like. I mean, let's just take a little sort of first impressions. It's kind of snub-nosed. But underneath that bonnet is a 1.5 litre diesel engine, one of three power outputs. This particular one is right in the middle and offers quite a lot of poke. But at the front end, there's something quite charming about it. There's a great big Citroen badge here that leaks into the headlight clusters over here with these nice kind of bits of, I mean, these are sort of brushed aluminium and then you've got some sort of shiny chroming around the headlights here. It really kind of works together. It's also got really tough black plastic durable bumper down the front here as well, which it's just peace of mind. You don't want to be going onto a site with all that metalwork exposed. So, you know, you've got some weight saving durable black plastic to save your brain from worrying about the bumps and scrapes that your van might pick up. It's a really good looking van from the front and that doesn't stop here, it's even like that on the side. And as you can see the side profile is just as attractive as the front. I mean just look at this big depression right here which is on the side of the panel. That is a perfect blank canvas for your branding to go. Stick your logo on this side, stick your phone number and contact details on this side. I mean it's just, it's just make it work for you and check out the wheels. Now those are great big steel wheels covered by a sort of alloy effect hubcap. Hubcaps are a little bit 1990s, but in my opinion, they're just an extra level of protection and a little bit more peace of mind. You've got your tough steel wheels and you've got plastic coverings over the top of them to make sure that they're, you know, kind of free of those bumps and scrapes at the end of your lease. The entire length of the vehicle from just at the end of the door panel, just to the wheel arch right here, there's a nice big black plastic bumper. Now that is there to just stop people when they open their doors a little bit close to your vehicle. Hopefully the impact will be taken by the bumper and not by your metalwork. So there you go, great profile. Now, while we're on the outside, why don't we head round to the back and take a look what the loading bay is like. And the Citroen Berlingo is just as attractive at the back end as it is at the front and the side. I particularly like how the logo kind of has black in the middle and kind of chrome on the outside. It's not something you might notice straight away, but I think it looks really attractive. I mean, you've also got this nice big bumper here. And one of the best things to notice on that is at this trim level, check out the parking sensors. Now you've got parking sensors at the back, which will show up on your infotainment screen as a kind of sonar display, showing you how close you are to something behind you. And that is great for peace of mind. So let's open the doors. They open up as standard to 90 degrees. And when you disengage the door locks, there's nice little yellow handles. They open up to 180 degrees, giving you excellent accessibility to do you know what I've got to call a surprisingly large loading bay? Now, as you can see, this is ply lined on the bottom and it's also ply lined in the panels as well. Again, it's extra peace of mind. You don't want your metalwork to get damaged when you're sliding things in and out at the back end. The ply lining will take the brunt of it, meaning at the end of the lease, there's hardly any bumps and scrapes. Perfect. It's something we can also provide free whenever you lease a vehicle from Vanarama. So, you know, that's always nice to know. The loading bay itself, as I said, is very nice and big and all the dimensions are going to be flying around me right now, including the excellent payload, which at some of the larger levels of this van is up to 1000 kilograms, which is absolutely phenomenal in the small van sector. For lashing points, you've got three down each side and you've even got a few bungee points to take advantage of as well. And one of the key things about this loading bay is it is way wide enough to get at least two Euro pallets in the back. That is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of, I think, many reasons why this van continues to get all of those awards. And another place in this van where the award-winning side is all ready to be seen is in the cabin. So let's head around there via the side door.
So here we are at the side sliding door, which because this is an award winning van is an award winning side sliding door. It opens up nicely and easily and locks into place right there, which is great. It means it's not going to slide shut on you while you're leaning in. Now it's a small van, so you're not going to be getting any Euro pallets in from the side here, but what you do have is a very nice and accessible entryway into your loading bay, which just adds a little bit of flexibility and practicality to what, as I've said, is already a phenomenal loading bay, capable of carrying payloads up to a thousand kilograms. I'm going to keep saying that because I can't quite believe that these platform vans are capable of carrying that much weight. Mind blowing. So, let's shut that award-winning side sliding door and get into the award-winning cabin. Huh. Okay, so it might be a little bit easy to be underwhelmed by what everyone is calling an award-winning cabin, but I have to say, the PSA Group small vans that all share the same platform and therefore the same cabins, the same loading bays, the same, almost same external looks, it's a really nice place to be. I've got to say that the seats are very comfortable. This driver's seat in particular is really nice and supportive with a driving position that is high enough to give you good visibility, but also low enough to make you feel like you're driving a car. You can see the end of the bonnet really nice and clearly, and I've got to say, they've done a really good job in here. So let's just take a look around. I mean, look, it's tough, durable black plastics with some nice upholstery, which kind of gives you a little two-tone gray and black kind of color scheme. There's not a lot to uh, argue with here. It's very functional and very, very comfortable. The only bits of light gray plastic are up here, but I'll get to that later because this is one of the only small vans in the sector that has pretty ample overhead storage. Okay, so steering wheel is completely blank of controls. Uh, you've got the Citroen badge in the middle and also for the horn, which is quite nice and loud. So everyone will be able to hear you when you're around. And I've also scared the living bejesus out of people just around me right there who all stopped and started and one guy over there dropped his Costa coffee. So I owe him one now. The controls are actually down here on this little toggle and this particular switch over here, this allows you to rotate through your driver information display, which is right in the middle of the dashboard. I'll get to that in a sec. You've also got your speed limiter and your cruise control controls right down here on this little bit here, which means that you've actually got a very nice clean steering wheel. <laughs> and loads of people are now beeping their horns. But hey, we'll just carry on as best we can, okay? Okay, so, tough, durable plastic steering wheel, very nice and grippy. I'm wearing some very nice Vanarama branded gloves, but they've got some nice grip in them, and in this cold weather, this steering wheel is really easy to hold on to. Behind the steering wheel, you've of course got your control stalks for your wipers, your indicators, your headlights, all that kind of stuff, and then you've got your dashboard instrumentation. Now, the PSA Group platform sharers all benefit from the same control clusters, and I've got to say, they're some of the clearest on the market. The rev counter is nice and clear with very stark white writing on a black background. The speedo is exactly the same, very nice white writing on a black background. You've even got your fuel gauge and your oil temperature light as well. That's really good to see. And in the middle of all of that, you've got a driver information display, which displays all the things that you usually get on those displays, such as your range, your fuel consumption. You can even see where you're going. It displays a nice little navigation sign when you're using the sat -nav system on the infotainment screen which I will also get to later. Now just above all of this you've got your first sign of storage. You've got a cup holder but then you've also got this nice little flip top that locks in place. So there you go see look at that action. You've got enough room in there to stick well do you know what almost 20 lion bars and I'm not talking about the sort of single bar ones I'm talking about those duo ones you know the ones I mean the one you open up and there's two of them in there. I mean this is a big big deep basin. Now, just along the dashboard, you've actually got another little storage cubby, which is very hard to access because of this. And I think this was probably added after they designed the dashboard. So I'm going to forgive them because the infotainment system is absolutely packed full of features. Not only do you have your music settings, your vehicle settings, navigation apps, vehicle settings, and your phone functions all in this screen, you've also got lovely ways to connect. You can connect up through Android Auto. You can use Apple CarPlay. You can even use Mirrorlink if you want or you can just plug it straight in here with this USB socket right there. It's a great infotainment system. At times it can be just a little tiny bit fiddly to get to the control you want to but it's really good. For a van of this size and a van of this kind of practicality and reliability, you can see why this particular infotainment screen gets all the rave reviews. Just below that, you've got your two vents, which obviously keep you warm or keep you cold, depending on whatever weather you're in. You've got your hazard light button, and you've also got a full central locking button right here, which is really good for peace of mind. If you stop at a traffic light and you wonder whether you've got everything locked, just whack that button and it will lock all the doors for you. So no one's gonna be sneaking into your loading bay while you're waiting at the traffic lights. 
Below those, you've got your climate controls. And of course, at this trim level, you get full air conditioning as standard. Yeah, which is always great because air conditioning is just one of those things that these days, if a van doesn't have, it's a really noticeable omission. Now you've got your temperature control on one side, you've got your fan speed on the other, and then you've got all the fan direction controls in the middle. Down below the climate controls, you've got two blank buttons. And just below those, you've got what looks like the world's smallest coffee cup holder. But in fact, that is where the traction control selector dial goes if you go for that option on the higher trim levels. So that's always one to remember. It's very cool. And on some of the vans we've reviewed previously, I'll flash up the link just around here, you'll be able to see that in action. The Vauxhall Combo Cargo, for instance, is one of those vehicles that comes with it at the middle trim level which is really cool. You've got a nice generous cubby here, and I said that's perfect to stash your phone in. When you've got it hooked up to the infotainment system, just stash your phone in there, it won't go anywhere. You've even got a little coin holder. Do we use coins these days? I thought everything was contactless, but um, you know, hey, yeah, if you've got coins, just stick them in there, and you know, when you need to pay for a, a trolley at the supermarket, you won't be dashing around for one, it'll be right there, unless of course you've spent it on, I don't know, Mars milk drinks or something like that. I, I quite like those. Below that, you've got an electric handbrake. Now, I know some people say electric handbrakes aren't the best thing to have in a vehicle like this, but actually, this is really easy to use. You pull it up to turn it on, you press it down to take it off. It really couldn't be simpler. And also, if you pull away while it's engaged, it will automatically deactivate anyway. So even if you forget, don't worry about it. You're not gonna mess the vehicle up. It knows that sometimes people might pull away by accident. The gear stick is sat on this great big console that juts out quite, you know, into the sort of legroom of the person who might be unfortunate enough to sit on this bench seat in the middle right here. But this is a small van. It's not usual that you're going to have three people in, but it's nice to know you have the option. However, there is going to be some awkward knee fondling between the main passenger and whoever's in this bench seat right here. But hey, variety is the spice of life and a little bit of knee fondling just peps up the day, in my opinion. The gear stick itself is actually really nice and easy to use. It's got nice shiny sides and when I you'll see on the test drive it's just so easy to use if I put my foot down on the clutch right now very smooth there's no notchiness there's just nice satisfying kind of bumps when it puts into place there's it's not like you're going to be driving an old t34 around having to use a mallet to engage the gears like this is just effortless effortless up into third up into fourth up into fifth it's just really nice and smooth Let's move along to the other bits of storage. You've got a flip top glove box here. It's not the biggest in the world, but it does have a kind of double shelf kind of feature. You've got a big bit at the front. If you reach your hand all the way back, there's another little shelf, which is great because it means you can store things of multiple lengths and multiple sizes. Below it, you've got probably the only thing that I would really criticize in here, which is this kind of slick plastic sort of, well, I don't know what it is. It's not really a cubby hole. It's just a kind of space. Uh, and I don't really know what you put in there. I think if you rolled a paper up loosely, it would probably stay in there, but I don't know. You might just shove some change in there or shove your keys in, or maybe stick a tool in there if you just need somewhere to put it. Underneath that, you have another random compartment, which is, I think, right next to a, what looks like a fuse box down there. Um, it's a little cubby hole, but it does have a lip at the front, which means anything you stick in the front there, it's not gonna go anywhere, which again, is a big bonus. Door storage is pretty good. I mean, there's not as much of it as you'd expect, but considering the other cubby holes and the sheer amount of them that there are in this vehicle, I think you'll forgive it because actually at the bottom of each door is quite a nice deep basin that you'll be able to fit a bottle of water in absolutely no problem and a few other bits and bobs. So let's move on to the overhead storage, which yes, the Citroen Berlingo has some overhead storage, which is very nice and generous. You will be able to fit a few box files up there. Absolutely no problem. There's also some controls up here, including lighting controls, alarm controls, and even an SOS button. So if you get into trouble, just press that. You'll be hooked up to Citroen's call center and they will dispatch someone on a gallant steed to come and rescue you and take you home. Now, let's move on to one of my favorite areas in the cabin of the Citroen Berlingo, the bench seat, which is actually almost like a multi-activity play center for a toddler. It is fantastic. Okay, first things first, pull this toggle here, drop the middle seat, boom. You've got a slide out desk for you to do all your invoicing on. That is great. Lift up this seat, boom! You've got under seat storage, which is more than enough for a few bits and bobs. You can even stick your iPad down there if you want to stash it in there. It'll also definitely take a sandwich. Now, I need to get out of the vehicle to show you what the actual passenger seat can do because it doesn't stop here. Okay, so let's show you what the rest of this seat can do. Now, all you need to do is find the little day glow handle, which to be fair, unless you cannot see very well, you'll be able to see because it sticks out like a sore thumb. Pull it up, 
and the seat raises up to increase the space in the cabin. So if you're carrying something like a heater or a massive box that you need just a little bit more room for, boom, there you go, done. So push this handle back in and down goes the seat. Then all you need to do is find the toggle on the top of it and pull it forward. It's got a metal back because this seat drops down, a hatch in the loading bay opens as well, and your load through increases the length of your loading bay by up to a meter. So if you are carrying any longer lengths of piping or something like that, you've got no problem. Plus the metal back will stop your upholstery from getting damaged. So there you go. What an award-winning cabin. I tell you what, the only thing we've got left to do now is get in the front of this vehicle and give it the Vanarama road test. When the Citroën Berlingo first launched, it scooped awards, and to be fair, it's continuing to scoop them. It was named International Van of the Year in 2019, which is a massive accolade to put under its belt. When it first launched, I feel that people didn't really understand what it was offering. I feel like they couldn't really comprehend that the Citroen Berlingo had gone from looking like a classic small van like the VW Caddy and suddenly was looking like a sort of scaled down medium van. In fact, that's something you're going to notice across the entire group of vans that use PSA Group small van platforms. So that's Citroen, Vauxhall, Peugeot, and in fact Toyota as well. Their Pro A City small van uses the exact same platform as this one. When the Citroen Berlingo first launched, it was available with 1.6 litre diesel engines and a 1.2 litre petrol engine. Shortly after that, actually about six to nine months later, they refined the range down and instead of the 1.6 litre diesel engines, they now come with 1.5 litre diesel engines in a choice of three power outputs. You still also have a 1.2 litre petrol engine to choose from as well, if that floats your boat. Now, those three power settings for the diesel engine, the lowest one at 75 PS, well, it does feel a little bit gutless actually, but the two above it, the middle one and the upper power outputs are where it really, really shines. The middle power setting, for instance, is the one that will allow you to start getting up to those thousand kilogram payloads for which this small van has rightly earned praise. Now for me, the Citroen Berlingo is a little bit of a misty eyed moment. About two and a half years ago, one of the first reviews that we sort of tried to try out this format was with the Citroen Berlingo. And since then I've sat in the front of so many vans that share the same platform that I feel like this is a home from home. I mean, look, PSA Group vans account for four of the vans available in the small and medium categories, all sharing the same platforms, all sharing the same engines, all offering the same level of quality, the same level of drive, steering ability, payload capacities, you know, it's going to come down to the choice of which one you prefer the look of, literally the look of, and which one you prefer the interior of. Now the Citroen Berlingos is actually really nice and as you've seen previously, it's a nice space to be. Admittedly it's quite light, but then think about all the other small vans that might be a bit more classic. What do they have in them? The cabin of the Citroen Berlingo is actually a really nice place to be. The driving position, for instance, is high enough that you get good visibility, but low enough to make you feel like you're driving a car. I don't know quite how they've done it, and to be fair, I say this about every single PSA Group small van that I get into. I don't know how they've made a van that looks like a small medium van feel like you're driving a compact van like the Ford Fiesta van. It's really very clever. And that's one of the major reasons why I think people should take a look at these vans when they're thinking about getting small vans. I mean, you look at all the, all the sort of fleets of sizes of Royal Mail, they've got things like the Peugeot Partner, the Peugeot Expert, the Citroen Berlingo and Citroen Dispatch sitting in their fleets. The fact that they're in fleets means that they have good reliability, they have good engine efficiency, they offer a massive return on investment in terms of fuel savings. The new 1.5 litre engines, I believe, are a major, major source of that kind of trust. When you get into a Citroen Berlingo and you drive it around for a few hundred miles, you will see what I mean. The return on investment, the reliability, I mean, those two major factors are just two massive reasons why I would recommend this small van to anyone on the hunt for one. So we're getting very close to Ladies Mile, which of course is that mile stretch of lovely open country road that I like to use to open the vans up a bit on. Now we do have a car in front of us, so I'm going to have to let a little bit of a gap form. Hopefully they will take this opportunity to do what I'm going to do and uh, put their car through the paces, but they are driving a Hyundai. so. Uh, 
we'll see how that works out for them. And someone parked on the side just opening their door into the middle of the road, which of course is the stupidest thing to do. But here we go, I'm just going to let that car get a little bit further away from me before I drop it down into second and see what this thing is made of. Okay, so we're down in second. Let's let the revs climb. Revs are up at 5,000. Up into third, they dropped to three and they're already climbing towards four. I'm already at 60 miles an hour and of course the legal speed limit for a van of this size is 60 miles an hour even on a de-restricted road. And as you can see, very comfortable climb up through the gears as well. The gear stick, I've already spoken about how nice it looks and how nice it feels, but to change gears is absolutely effortless. PSA Group platform sharing vans all have this same gearbox and I've got to say each and every one of them is an absolute pleasure to drive. There's no notchiness, no feeling like you have to shunk it into place, not like a T34 driver from the Second World War using a mallet to whack the gear stick into place to change gears. There's none of that. No effort, no nothing, no drama, no hassle. Gotta love it. And as I wind my merry way home, I'm getting ready to hand over to me to say those much vaunted, often heard words. So, how do we finish this one? I'm excited to see what I say. So, how do we finish this one? Well, I'm pretty sure over the course of this review, you'll have seen that the Citroen Berlingo winning all those awards was no mistake. It's a phenomenally well-rounded small van capable of carrying payloads up to a thousand kilograms. It's a phenomenally well thought out and put together vehicle. And if you are on the hunt for your next small van, take a look at the Citroen Berlingo. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed.